Hello children, welcome to another session of revision of the poem in the bazaars of Hyderabad. This poem, as you remember, we had discussed was written by Sarojini Naidu and it was written during the time when uh, India was not free, it was under the British rule and at that time the Indian local newspapers were made to uh, shut down, they were not allowed to be published. It was that time that Sarojini Naidu had written this poem to spread the awareness of buying products from Indian bazaars or the Indian markets. So that was the basic reason of her to write this uh, poem there. She was basically a freedom fighter and there are different ways of uh, putting up their fights. It's not always just picking up your swords and bullets and all that, fighting against the British soldiers and all. But there are different ways like this of writing poems and motivating the people to buy products from Indian markets only. So that uh, India could enrich itself, it could increase in its uh, earning capacities with people buying things from the local markets. And since she was from Hyderabad, she is talking about the Hyderabad Bazaar. Basically, what in this poem she's been trying to tell us is all about the colorful things that are spread in the market area. Different people selling that ki different kinds of things, whichever, whatever is related to them, they are selling those products. Now, uh, the entire poem is an imagery. The poetic device used here is more of imagery which is uh, presented here. Now, what is imagery? Something, some phrases, some words which are used uh, gives a pictorial image of the entire thing happening there. So let's quickly just go through uh, the poem and then we'll come to the discussion about the question answers, the word meanings and extract from the poem. Let's just pick one or two, whichever we can. What do you sell, O ye merchants? Richly your wares are displayed. Means your uh, wares, the things that you sell are put up there in, the, uh, in your uh, shop or wherever. And you've displayed it so beautifully so that people can see. Now, what are the things which are displayed? There are turbans of crimson and silver, mirrors, uh, tunics of purple brocade, mirror with panels of amber and daggers with handles of jade. Now, crimson means red. Tunics are those dresses, one piece dresses which are worn. The meaning here is already given. Long, loose fitting garments worn by men and women. Brocade is... Uh, yet another thing which is very uh, full of very heavy fabric and uh, rich with raised designs in it. Mirror with panels of amber. Amber is actually a deep yellow color. And daggers, daggers means knives. Daggers with handles of jade. Jade is again a greenish color. So you get to see different colors here. You can imagine that uh, entire wares are so colorful and everything. Doesn't, doesn't that come in the... Uh, in front of us a scene which comes in front of us so that is our imagery that is uh, the poetic device that the poet has used here that is imagery what do you weigh O oh, ye vendors now he the poetess is asking the vendors that what all do they weigh they weigh and they sell so they weigh saffron and lentil and rice what do you grind O oh, ye maidens maidens are young ladies young girls uh, young ladies precisely and grind means uh, breaking it into pieces. In the mixes, you grind something. That's it. Now, what are you maidens grinding? Sandalwood, henna and spice. Spice, the Hindi word is the masale. That is being grinded. What do you call Oye peddlers? Now, peddlers are people who are selling their products by moving around in from one place to another, shouting for their products, maybe on cycles or those... Uh, carts that they are pulling their products. What do you call Oye peddlers? Chessmen and ivory dice. So that's what they are selling. They were selling dice. You know the game of uh, Ludo and there are different games where you have the dice. So that is made of ivory. And what is ivory? It's uh, some material which is there in the that white tooth of an elephant that you get it from there. Now uh, what do you make Oye goldsmith? Now the poetess is asking the goldsmith what all does the goldsmith make? Wristlet, something that you wear in the hand. Wristlet, anklet, something on the foot, the ankle part. 
wristlet and anklet and rings and those rings if you see you see i'm wearing these rings this is your wristlet is something that is worn on the wrist and an anklet at the foot so these are the ornaments which are worn by uh, the people by women most of them and that is what the goldsmith is making let's see what all what more is the goldsmith making bells for the feet of blue pigeons now blue pigeons are a breed of pigeons which are bigger than the normal size they are not the normal ones and they are making frail frail means very delicate very uh, very very uh, it can break up very easily so the bells which are being uh, made are very delicate they are frail as dragonfly's wings now dragonfly's wings it's being compared to the dragonfly if you see there is a comparison here without the word is and like so it is a metaphor here the poetic device used here is a metaphor bells for the feet of blue pigeons frail as a dragon's dragonfly's wings now comparison with the bells which are made and how delicate are they they are delicate like the dragonfly's wings metaphor poetic device used here girdles of gold for the dancers for the dancers you wear something in your waist uh it's it's an ornament which is worn by the dancers basically scabbards of gold for the king now what are scabbards they are protective covering for the swords and the knives right so what are these different different things that the goldsmith is making wristlet anklet ring the bells for the blue pigeons then you have the girdles for the dancers and they are also making the scabbards for the king moving to the next par uh, next stanza what do you cry o oh, ye fruit men now what are the fruits they are selling citron pomegranate and plum what do you play o oh, magicians sitar sarangi or drum these are the different uh, instruments that they are sitting there and playing and earning their living from that what do you chant o oh, ye merchants and chant is something uh, basically it's more related to repeating something you chant it's something more related to religion religious chanting goes on so what do you chant o ye magicians spells for the eons to come spells for the eons to come eons is again it's an indefinitely long period of time now they are chanting spells they're chanting magical words which stays there for years and years to come what do you weave o oh, ye flower girls now the flower girls are also weaving something they are making something out of those flowers what are they with tassels of ozer and red now these are the colors which have been shown here crown of the brow of a bridegroom now that's a happy occasion a happy moment for which they are making and what is that for the wedding for the crown of the bridegroom they are making those uh tassels those uh, strings tied together and uh, those things which are tied by the bridegroom on the face and the head that's that, that's what they are making and further they are making chaplets to garland his bed that means they are making sheets of uh, they are making chap chaplets means small flowers uh, the garlands made with small uh, flower small garlands and they are making it to cover the bed of the bridegroom further again it is for a sad moment that they are making and that is they are making sheets of white blossoms of white flowers which are newly picked the smell is very good of newly picked flowers and they are using those making those sheets to perfume the sleep of the dead means when a person dies per perfume the sleep means to give perfume to the dead body now here sleep of the dead and uh, to perfume a, a person who is dead is not alive it's not a human anymore it's just a body but here a personification has been shown to perfume something which is already dead it's not a human but human quality is given so it's a personification which is shown here i hope the poem is very very clear to you people but let's begin with uh, just a few revision maybe uh, just a few word meanings that we can pick up and then a few uh, one extract maybe or two more questions that we can pick up further okay let's begin with the word meanings
let me just pick up a few word meanings, just four of them. Where's Jade? Where's? We have Jade. Then further, Eons and Brocade. Eons and Brocade. As we see, we've just uh, discussed the meanings with you. But still, I will further give it to you. What do we mean by where, where's? That means they are goods for sale. Merchants had kept their wares on display. Further, we have jade. What do we mean by jade? Well, jade is a precious stone. A precious stone. Then we have aeons, that is an indefinitely long period of time. And in that's an indefinitely that continues for a very very long time. In de fi nit indefinitely indefinitely long that's an indefinitely long period of time. Now, coming to the next word which is brocade. What do we mean by brocade? Brocade is something which is an extra work of um, embroidery has been done where it is a heavy network. And that's a heavy, heavy interwoven. Interwoven. That's made with hands interwoven with rich with rich raised designs right they are raised designs which have been made okay um, we have picked up an in in defy n e t n i t e l y indefinitely in there by Nitli. Okay. Clear? Now these were just a few word meanings that we've discussed. Let me rub the board and let's move to an extract. Okay. Coming to the extract here. One extract that I uh, picked up was talking about those spells. Okay. Now it says spells for the eons to come. Spells for the eons to come. There is a line which uh, says this, and the questions that is asked that have been asked here is name the poet, uh, name the poem, and the poetess or the poet. Poem is the bazaars of Hyderabad, and the poet is Sarojini Naidu. The next question here is who chants the spells of the eons to come? Who uh, who is chanting them? Remember we were when we were reading the poem, who are they who are chanting? They are the magicians. Magicians are chanting the spells. Okay, the next question is, where do they chant the spell, spells? Where are they chanting this? Which is the place that they are chanting in? They are chanting in the bazaars of Hyderabad. That's the answer. They are chanting in the bazaars of Hyderabad. Last question of the extract identify the poetic device in the above line which is the poetic device in the above line which has been used something that you can imagine right that's the imagery so the poetic device which has been used is imagery in this line that's because when they are chanting you can imagine the scene happening right in front of you Okay, children, coming to the question answers. That was one extract that I just picked up for a quick revision with you people. Coming to a few question answers. First ones, first, if I pick up from the book here, it says uh, in the first paragraph, about it's talking about the merchants, if you remember. So the question is, what and where do the merchants sell? So what do they sell? 
and where do they sell where is of course in the bazaars of hyderabad so what and where do the merchants sell describe so you have to describe of what exactly they are selling and remember your questions answers are going to be in around 30 to 40 words so please be very careful to manage yourself if it's a small answer you can always add up to it a few sentences and words to it you can elaborate and write on that matter if it is already a long answer you can summarize it into a small shorter one and answer this questions further uh the question was what and where do the merchants sell the merchants uh, they display their wares uh, what are they what are the wares they are turbans of crimson and silver tunics of purple brocade mirror with panels of amber and daggers with handles of jade so these are the things each one of the things have been described also in which color they have been made and all those details also so this that's a, that answers your question what and where do they uh, sell they sell it in the bazaars of hyderabad our next question what are the flower girls weaving and uh, and for whom so coming to the first and the last paragraph of uh, the stanza of the poem The last one says about talks about the flower girls. What are they weaving? They are weaving the crown of the bro of a bridegroom, chaplets to garland his bed, and sheets of white blossom to perfume the sleep of the dead. See, basically, when you've already learned this poem, you will not find it difficult to answer the questions word by word. It's already there in your head. I hope uh, the poem is very clear to you. The poetic devices are clear to you. The questions. uh you can try framing them individual uh, lines you can pick up questions on your own and understand the poem thoroughly wish you all the very best thank you children